trying to view this in a smaller screen on my laptop and on my tablet. Okay, there we go. I finally flipped over. Move the spin wheel out of the way. See if anybody's going to join. Here. All right, well. Nobody's joining yet, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, they can just go back and look. So I'll show you guys what I'm going to do to start with. So this stitch here is what I call the bush stitch. It was first taught to me by um, one of my friends who taught me how to read crochet patterns. Um, her name was Miss Miss Wiggins. And she this was in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, back in the 90s when I was stationed there. And uh, she could, by memory, make some of the most beautiful crochet things you've ever seen in your life. And, um, and she was a, an amazing crocheter. So she was a LPN at the Navy Hospital in Jacksonville, and I was a corpsman working there. Um, and we were working, I was working in the labor and delivery unit for my rotation, and um, it would be very boring there um, for days and weeks at a time. You will only have maybe one or two people, two or three people coming in to deliver. So, um, at night but then on the full moons or the nights when crazy stuff was happening out in town with people drinking and stuff like that or when a ship came in um that's when it seems to be when things got crazy in the labor and delivery unit so but for those slow nights she taught us how to crochet uh, and read the crochet patterns because basically all i was doing was basic things that my grandma and them had taught me and all they had taught me how to do was basically do the chain and to do a circle and to make doilies, not to um, make garments. Uh, I would do scarves and then I would do like square uh, fingerless gloves where I would just crochet a square and then I would seam it and didn't have a thumb gusset. Um, it was just a wrist warmer, basically a long wrist warmer. Um, so Ms. Wiggins taught me more about crochet than anyone else. So this pattern is one of the first patterns she taught me for making blankets with. And um, and but she never taught me how to make it in the round. So I taught myself how to make it and do it in the round through trial and error. So this is what it looks like in the round. The, the ribbing is a crochet ribbing that I did first. And then I picked up the stitches and knit a row of um, single crochet. And then I started the bush stitch pattern, um, which is two double crochet, chain two, single crochet, and the same stitch. Then you skip two 
chains and then you repeat the two double crochet chain to single crochet in the same stitch you repeat that all the way around and you keep repeating you can see here what one of my decrease rows is in this little corner here so I mean, it's gonna be on your head so this one is more it, it is more even than that one so I probably actually did a decrease in the corner that's why it sticks out like that but um I made this hat yesterday when we were at our little um crochet knitting um getting out of the house meet up yesterday in front of the yarn store on the little lawn in front of baba sheep um that's local here in to norfolk virginia um an amazing yarn store so if you're traveling in this area and looking for a yarn store or, or you're you know local or whatever and you just never went then go over and check out um baba sheep um it's an amazing yarn store and um you won't regret it i never do <laughs> so okay so this hat like i said it has a crochet rib border hat um band at the bottom and then i did a row of single crochet and then i started a pattern and I started decreases once I had about, um, where's my measuring tape at? Stuff is never where I want it when I need it. That's usually how it is. So let's use this. So the, so the brim is about, two and three quarter inches okay and so the hat before i started to get decreases is about it's about almost at right at three inches before i started to decrease and it was one decrease row one regular row one decrease row one regular row and then the decrease row up here so Hey, Ken. Oh, my goodness, Ken. How are you? I keep checking your channel. I don't see no new videos. But I don't want to be, you know, instigating because I know you got a lot of stuff going on, too. So, but we would love to see some new videos. <laughs> this is the Studio Classic by Nicole. And this is her golden yellow. Um. This was the golden yellow colorway. Somebody told me I could still order this through Michael because Michael brought out all the AC Moore's um, stitched by Nicole was from was an AC Moore brand. Thank you so much, Arlene. Thank you. So, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to show you guys how to do the bush stitch in the round um thank you sharon i appreciate everybody that came to the hop it was so much fun so much fun to be able to show people how my spinning and some of the processes i do when i'm spinning it was it was a lot of fun and then i'm going to show you why I, this second hat is going to actually have an a, a knit on uh brim i'm going to actually pick up the stitches and I'm going to knit the a one by one rib for this hat, this second hat that I'm going to do. And the reason I do this is because the knit brims tend to be have more snapback than the crochet brims. And after you wash them, they still maintain their, their stretchiness for a, 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 a long time before you actually have to probably weave in. If, if there's, this hat has wool content, so I won't have to have to worry about the brim getting stretched out of um proportion because it's like a 75% uh, 25% wool whereas this hat is 100% acrylic so eventually i'm going to have to probably put up if if it's a hat that one of my children keep um eventually i will have to put a piece of um elastic in this brim so that it snugs back onto the head so yeah so the first thing you're going to have to do is make a chain of 70 if you're going to follow along. If you're if you're just hanging out with me, that's fine too. But um, I always do a slip knot. 
and um we're just gonna make a chain of 70. i don't pull my slip knots tight i like to leave them loose in the event that i don't have enough stitches when i count i can always pull this loop looser and i can use this little bit of yarn i left to put on a couple more stitches to get the right amount of stitches so that's why i tell people when i'm teaching them how to crochet i say there's nothing wrong with leaving about a seven inch tail on your work you can always weave it in um which gives you more strength weaving that tail in a, a longer distance um because nosy little hands like children they are notorious for finding the end of something and figuring out how to unweave it and then next thing you know you got a, a hole in your work or your work is unraveling from the wrong direction so it's not uh, seven, a six or seven inch or longer tail. There's nothing wrong with that. So, and I always leave, like I said, I leave mine loose so that I can work it and work with it in the event that I need more um, stitches. And if I leave it loose, if I have too many stitches, I can also unravel those stitches from this end without worrying about my work coming loose. So, so that's one. So we're gonna do seventy stitches. I think I got the wrong end. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong end. All right, we're gonna start over. I'm working with the wrong end. I'm this yarn I was pulling from the center. If you can pull from the center, I I prefer to pull from the center if I can. If not, then I will um, usually have like a a yarn bowl or something I can sit it in so it has been around in. So. Mm -hmm. But um, I love this uh, yarn from AC Moore. I haven't checked the um, Michael's website to see if I can get more of it yet. If so, I'll be ordering more of their brown and their pumpkin, their burnt orange, because that's my sister's favorite color. So it's always good to have that in stock for birthday and Christmas presents for her. And you don't want to put your first stitches real tight. You need those stitches to be movable. Um, and you want your tension to be somewhat the same throughout. But if you're going to make an adult size hat, I would with worsted weight, I would start with 70 stitches. I know a lot of people do worsted weight adult size hats in um like 64 stitches or around somewhere around there. But this hat is designed to be a little bit on the bigger side so that it's you have like like I have dreadlocks now. So if you have a lot of hair, it's a little on the bigger side, so you can easily fit that hair up under that hat. And cover your ears up to and I don't know how many stitches I got because I'm not counting. <laughs> I was talking. So I'm gonna have to go back and count. And we're gonna do one row of single crochet, and I'm gonna show you I mean, the reason why because I want these. This first row is be flattened out so that these two stitches, you can see it's like two, 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 these V stitches. So the V stitches are nice and flat to make it easier to pick up, pick up stitches when I pick up stitches for my brim. All right, so let's see what we got, y'all.
We got 64 stitches so far. So there's 70 stitches. So I'm going to do 72 because you'll see in a minute. So now I'm going to show you how to make sure that that, that brim is nice and flat. You're going to turn your chain over. You want to see those bumps. See these bumps on the back of that chain? I'm trying to. Okay. You see these bumps on the back of the chain? That's what you're going to crochet into, those bumps. And what that's going to do is allow this side of your chain to stay nice and flat and even. And then after we go back along those bumps, then we're going to join it in the round to get ready to start our um, bush stitch pattern. So we're going to turn our work over. We're going to skip that first bump right here. And then we're going to go in through the back of the other one. We're going to yarn over, pull it through, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through both of those. And there you have your single crochet. We're going to do that all the way back. And since I'm doing this live, y'all get to sit here and watch me. There will be, I don't edit my videos, so there will be no downloading and editing this video. What you see is what you get, what you hear is what you hear, and so on and so forth. Um, this is not some pro professional production. This is just me sharing my craft with you guys and um i'm trying to stay in camera so i'll be going a lot slower than i normally crochet and if you need it to be even slower then you're going to have to go back and and put this on um one of those where you can slow down the speed to make it easier um, i'm just showing you guys the stitch in this technique i'm not doing a basic tutorial or anything like that and um the first row is always usually let me take this off for a minute i'll put it back on if i can get up speed the my spinning wheel is kind of let me move it out of the way because it's kind of pressing to my thigh and it doesn't feel too good so give me a second i'll move this out of the way okay i can pull up closer to my table <sighs> Jacket, all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can do this. No. Okay. So we're just going to go back all the way back, working a single crochet and all these bumps back to the end. Are you still there, Ken? Are you gonna did you have a garden last year or this year? Did you have a garden this year? Weird. What does the video look like for you guys? Is it blurry or is it does it look okay? You didn't? Well, I haven't had a garden since my dog died, but I'm determined to have one next year, so during the fall and winter, I'm going to be trying to go out there in the yard and, and get stuff started. It's just, you know, you, you go out there and you look and he's not there and you just, it's just a weird feeling, you know, it's weird. Um, so it's blurry a little bit. It's on 700 and check your settings because for some reason, YouTube isn't saving people's preferred video settings. Um, I've noticed that they mine is always getting dropped down to 
360 or um 480 when i want it up at um the higher uh video video quality settings So I got this camera is set for 720. Um, if I could get YouTube's freaking video studio to work right for me, I'm using StreamYard and um, filming at 720p. I was spinning some Lincoln long wool this morning and if fiber is everywhere. <laughs> I keep finding it everywhere. It's 12 o'clock already. But I ordered a American persimmon tree um, to plant in the garden. I have a fig tree. I gotta prune it back this winter once we have a good frost. You start it back with your drop spindle. That's awesome. And I ordered some um pack of rainbow carrots seeds, some French radish seeds, some um beets and I'm going to be growing some stuff in containers as well as having a little I guess some square foot garden attempts and whatnot and no-till gardening attempts it's going to be doing a lot of experimenting this spring and summer coming up I've been mostly working from home because of the, the COVID. I have to go into work on Tuesday um, and help out since it's, uh, people are going to be voting, which they could have been voting in my area. It could have been voting for the last month and a half since certain precincts have had their precincts open and people have been voting. I know I went and voted early at the precinct. I don't trust sending my ballot in by mail. Uh, I think I think a lot of shenanigans are gonna take place because of mail in ballots. I like to roast them. Roast them with some olive oil and crack some um, sea salt and pepper, crack pepper on them and roast them and and um and then make a balsamic vinegar uh sauce to drizzle on them um, when they're about done. Uh, some balsamic vinegar and honey and um, a little bit of uh, chicken stock and let it reduce on the stove until it's like a, a, a syrup almost. And then brush it onto the beets right before they come out of the oven. It is so good, Ken. I'm telling you, it is so good. So good. All right, so we're at the end now. And this is that stitch that I left loose. And I didn't count, but I'm just going to go into it and do a single crochet. All right. So now we're going to flatten this out and we're going to join our, we're going to join it in the round. And it, some might say, well, that looks like it's going to be a big hat. It might look like like that, but once you get in pattern, and you can always tweak the brim so that the hat fits. It'll be more of a, a slouchy hat. Um, but if you have somebody that has a lot of hair, they prefer their hats to be a little bit bigger and slouchier so they can get all their hair up under it. Um, especially if you're in the African-American community and you have a, a thicker 
um, woolly head of hair or if you have uh, dreadlocks or whatever type of hairstyle that you're sporting, you might need a bigger hat to get all that hair up under it. All right, so I use a stitch marker and I pull my ends together. That way, even if it flips, you make sure you're, you're not twisted. It'll still be together so you won't have to sit there and flatten it all out again. Okay, so now we have it joined with the stitch marker. So we're just I'm just gonna turn around here and I'm gonna do a slip stitch to join it to the other side. Okay, so I'm just gonna see how you have the V like I showed you guys. Now you have that nice edge on both sides, the sides you were working and your side where you picked up that center little bump so now you got a nice edge on both sides of your work so it's easy to go up under those first two and slip stitch it into place and you're going to chain three okay this will chain two you're going to chain two this chain two is going to be your center line in your hat this is going to be your starting point for each row because for this stitch because of the way it's made you're going to have to work one side and then turn your work when you come back and go back in the opposite direction. Um, Something because of the way this stitch is made. You're not going to be able to, it's not one of those where you keep going in the same direction each time you do a new row. Okay, so we're going to do our chain two. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to skip two chains. So you're going to skip this chain right here that's right beside your chain two and you're going to skip this chain and you're going to go into that third chain you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull it through and then you're going to do a double crochet which is go through two go through two and that's a double crochet you're going to yarn over put another double crochet in that same stitch okay you're going to chain two and you're going to go into the same stitch pull up a loop and then you're going to do a single crochet you're going to yarn over and carry through those two loops and then you're going to skip two chains skip one skip two and you're going to yarn over. You're going to do your double crochet, double crochet, let me, that might be annoying y'all. Hold on, let me cover that up. Some of y'all might be focusing on him and not focusing on me. So, okay. <clears throat> and then you're going to chain two. Go into that same stitch and do your single crochet. You're going to do that all the way around. If I was doing this in my lap, it would be so much faster. But my arms are hovering over the table a ways. And this is the bush stitch because to me it looks like a cute little bush or boxwood. Like, like you know, you have like the box boxwood bushes um, forming a hedge. But when before they get start getting big and blending into each other, they kind of look like little bushes like that. Or if you're out in the field and you got some bush, some rows of fresh bush peas that hasn't been pulled on, tugged on for somebody picking them yet, you have these nice, um, pretty bushes. And there's even a sage called bush sage that you can keep it pruned into these little bushes. So, um, so yeah, we're just going to do this stitch all the way back around to the beginning. And that's where we might have to tweak something because I may not have counted properly. I might not have had enough stitches, but with crochet, it's so easy to fix stuff without having to unravel everything. I could, if I was a perfectionist, I could, could pull my work all the way back to where I started at, but we're not. I'm gonna show y'all that everything ain't gotta be perfect. You, this hat is, the purpose of this, purpose of this hat is to keep your head warm. <laughs> it is not a showpiece. Well, at least it's not for me. It's not a showpiece. These these two hats I made are actually going to be going to to my cousin and her her kids in North Carolina. So I got to do let me see. I got to do one for her, one for her husband. 
and her two daughters and her son. So I got to do five hats and send to them. So this will be the second hat for them to enjoy. I still have those socks you made me. I still wear those socks like every two weeks or so after I do the laundry. I still wear those those socks. I love those socks. Love them. Let me get y'all closer so excuse the shaking. Sounds like my granddaughter is up. Yeah, Ken, I have two grandkids now. I have a one-year-old um, B. And she's probably she's getting close to 18 months, I think. And then I have my little grandson. He's like five and a half months old, I think. And um, yeah, all my kids are adults now. And so, yeah, life goes on. It's cloudy today. I wonder if it's gonna rain. Guess I can be. I was playing around with some watercolors last night, and it looked like there was a face in there. So I just took my pen out and just outlined some of the stuff in the watercolor. So that was a lot of fun. Just random, but it was fun. How is your sister doing? How is your family? I'm trying to remember what I did with my darning needle. All right, guys, we're getting close to our starting point here. We're going to see what we got to fudge. When we get to the end, <laughs> all right, look at that. We only have two left at the end but this is where we did our slip stitch so it actually looks like three but we don't want to squeeze another um we don't want to squeeze another shell half shell stitch in there so what we're going to do is we're just going to slide up under our chain two it's going to slide up on our chain two we're going to pull it through slip stitch there and we're going to chain two now we have to turn our work Okay, you're going to turn it because now we got to go back in the other direction because we're going to be doing three, two double crochet, chain two, single crochet in that chain two we do um, when we do our stitch. 
So that's where we're going to be putting our next stitch at. So we're going to do our two double crochet, chain two, single crochet. And we're going to do that in each of those chain two spaces around. You can see that's why you have to chain the two. You got to turn your work, chain the two up and get started going back the other way. Because we're working these stitches. And if you're working flat doing a scarf, you do the same thing. You're still going to have to turn your work you're going to be working in those chain two spaces and you just keep working in those chain two spaces until your piece is as wide or as long well as long as you want it um paper sticking in my arm <laughs> and that's that's the bush stitch how i do it when i'm working in and around you could do this doing a sweater i've done a sweater uh well a top not necessarily a sweater doing the bush stitch this way and um and what i did was what i've done working that flat and then just seaming the ends together and then i've done one in the round where you have this <clears throat> seam going <coughs> excuse me drink some water where you have this seam going one side of the sweater the garment and it makes a real pretty lacy pattern the bigger hook you use the bigger the stitches the wide more wide open the space and this is an eye hook which is a three what is that 5.5 yeah 5.5 millimeter and these are susan bates hooks i prefer susan bates hooks um that's just me. I actually, when I started learning how to crochet and whatnot, I was taught on boy hooks because at the time in rural North Carolina, where I'm from, that's all that was available to me. And then I got introduced to Susan Bates hooks by Miss Wiggins. When I was stationed at Camp Lejeune, there was a craft store down there called the All America Craft Store. And I will stop through there every so often and pick up hooks because I seem to be one of those people that give hooks to everybody. So no matter where I was stationed at, no matter where I traveled to, I always seem to lose my uh, hook. And I lost my absolute favorite hook that I probably had for almost 30 years in the airport in Vegas last year. Yeah, I was heartbroken. <laughs> But I figured that they probably either auctioned that stuff off or donated to Goodwill or maybe somebody who works there was a crafter or somebody who travels was a crafter and said, ooh, a crochet hook and picked it up. And, and it's being used by somebody awesome um, who found them a crochet hook at the McLaren Airport in Vegas last year. So, yeah, well, not last year. It was actually this year. But, yeah, it seems like last year it was so long ago because it was in February. So this hat is more going to be more of a tam size, um, like a beret style hat. So it's going to have plenty of room for uh, big hair. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a decrease with this pattern. Um, let me see how many about how many rows we got to go. Where is my one? Okay. So we're already at almost two inches just with two rows of this stitch. Um, it grows, it grows quickly. So this would be an awesome stitch to use if you're gonna make a sweater. You'd be surprised at how fast. I mean, you're gonna have to wear something under it because of the, the chain two holes. Um, but it still be an awesome fast pattern to use for a sweater it's my favorite go-to baby blanket stitch because it's pretty you have a um, neat stitch definition stitch definition and it's fast it's super fast especially if you're using a worsted weight yarn and a hook or larger 
you could get you could get done with a project really fast and they'll think you worked on it for days and weeks and months and don't tell them how long it actually took you let them think you slaved over it toiled over it agonized over every stitch let them think that they don't need to know the truth <laughs> but um yeah Take that down to the table. It keeps moving. I don't want to stay in place. Now, if the tail is getting on your nerves, like this one is getting on my nerves, you could just go ahead and since you have since you have a stitch, since I have a stitch marker there, I can go ahead and weave that tail in some and then cut it. Cause it's getting on my nerves so I'm gonna do that real quick like I, you don't have to do stuff the way other people do stuff you can do stuff the way you want to do stuff I mean it, it's your project you don't have to wait till the end to do certain steps all the time I have a stitch marker there so I don't need this tail let me know where the, the beginning and the end of my row is I have a stitch marker See, so now it's joined, and all I have to do is just weave it in and out along the bottom here for a little bit. Sometimes I make sure I go in between some of this um, the yarn plies just to make sure it's in there good. Remember, we don't want we don't want curious little hands finding our end and. Then proceeding to unravel our work. Because even if though I'm a fast crocheter, I don't have to redo something if I don't have to. I'm just doing like a little light tug. I'm holding the yarn so it doesn't cinch it. I'm just doing like a little light tug before I move on. But I don't want it to cinch up like a purse string. I don't want that to happen. So that's why you need to hold your work. You can go up through those stitches because if you go in a different direction that actually strengthens your weaving in and makes it let's see I just went up under two I don't know if you guys can see that let me see I went up under two of the plies in this yarn the yarn is this yarn is a four ply yarn and then we're just gonna take it through the back over here and I'm going to snip it. That may not remain my back. I don't know. Because this pattern looks the same on both sides. So it's reversible. But that's where I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to cut it. Get it out of my way. Because it was getting on my everlasting nerves. Alright. So that's done. And I still have my stitch marker. To show me where I stopped. But this pattern, because we are doing a chain two as our seam line, when you get back to that chain two, like I am right now, and do your slip stitch and chain two up, that's also a way for you to know you have reached your beginning point. So we're going to turn our work, we're going to yarn over and go up under our chain two space. And we're going to just keep doing that until the hat is as long as you want it. So this is probably about almost once I do this row it's going to be at about two and a um, half inches close to three inches And now I need to find my ring and put it back on because I can go faster like this and it's burning my finger. Took it off where did I put it? Hmm. Let's 
copper one. Here it is. Okay. These finger cuffs. See, you see that line in my skin? That's me burning off my skin with that yarn because it's I'm pulling it through so fast. That's why I have finger cuffs to protect my skin. Because it's no fun not being able to knit or crochet because you have a burn your arm burn on your finger and you have and it's broken the skin and you gotta wait for it to heal. So it's best just to spend a little money. At least this wasn't expensive. I think it was like maybe twenty dollars. Get you a finger cuff or get somebody to make your finger cuff if you have metal workers in your family and uh, protect your skin on your finger. Why burn your skin off if you don't have to? What I'm doing when I stop is I'm pulling yarn out of the skein. I need to put it like I don't have my little yarn bucket that I usually sit stuff in. My grandbaby has claimed it, it has has cleaned it for her own she totes it around i put some um leftover yarn in there rolled up in balls and put it in there this that's how I, where i saved my little remnants that's left over from various projects and she likes carrying it around she drapes she drapes yarn over herself like it's jewelry or something she's a funny little girl i'm hoping i'm hoping that she'll be the one that inherits inherits my kingdom <laughs> my yarn my yarny and art supply kingdom i'm hoping that that b ends up um being my my yarn person because none of her aunts and uncles are aunts and uncle i only have the one son so yeah Yesterday we were sitting outside in front of Baba's, like I was telling y'all earlier, and uh, it was getting cold. A little cold front was pushing through, and my hands were so cold that I had to go slow. It took me forever to do that other hat, but as you can see here, my hands are just fine. All right, we're back around to the beginning again. This isn't sticking now. And I think I'm going to have the baby in a minute. All right, so we're back around. So I'm going to go ahead and chain two as measure. Yep, she's fussing with the baby. So we're at two and a half. Hey. Put up baby Jane. So I'll go ahead and put up baby Jane. So I'll go ahead and put up the baby gate. Oh, okay. So I'm back. Hey, hey, Ashley. So she just she she just decided to run away from grandma. So she went upstairs with her mama. So well, I, I'm still here. Now I gotta get my chair closer. Did Evan have a good time last night?
นะเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส่งผมเขาส
Yeah, that's the other 20 I sent you was for the venison lady. So, yeah. Oh. Facebook. I love venison. All right, we should be almost at three inches here. So we can start decreasing. Yep. All right. So I'll, we're going to do one more row and then the row after that, we're going to start our decrease because we're at three inches. So chain, get our chain two. Now we're going to turn our work and go back the other direction. I just, um, before I came on, I took that um, fiber that Laura sent and I took and rolled it into balls uh, to, to, cause it was starting to stick together and get a little felty in places. So I just want to go ahead and break that feltiness, felted parts up. And um, so I rolled it into balls and weighed it and it's like one pound and eight ounces. Uh, so a pound and a half of fiber. And I started spinning some of it, and it's um it's spinning up pretty good. But yeah, but once it's spun up, if you could, it feels a little more sh sh scratchy than how it was uh just there in the bag. So, but she can it can that Lincoln wool tends to soften as it ages, so she can shampoo it and um not shampoo it but um put it in um what's the word i'm looking for hair conditioner she can air hair hair conditioner she can add hair conditioner and let it soak in some warm water with a good hair conditioner i will get some of the paul mitchell the conditioner or something like that, and let it soak in that in warm water for several hours, and then do a, a light rinse. I mean, and go from there. She doesn't even really have to rinse it, she can just let it dry like that. It doesn't tend to film or flake. Um, So once we get back around, and you can watch the video from the beginning if you want to learn how to do this, but 
since we finished this row, we're going to start our first decreases. Let me change to enter. Um, don't do your decrease on the first chain two space. Always start your decreases on the the second or the third chain two space, so you don't get that buckle right here beside your chain two. So we're gonna do our regular stitch, bush stitch right here. And in our second one, we're gonna do a bush stitch. And the third one, we're gonna start our decreases. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna yarn over anything. We're just gonna go up under that third bush stitch, yarn over and bring it through. We got two loops on the needle. Then we're gonna go under the next bush, bush stitch, yarn over, go through two. And we're gonna push these stitches together like this, okay? We're gonna yarn over and go through two and yarn over and go through two, okay? And then we're gonna do like a one double crochet, chain two and single crochet to create a bush stitch. So you see this is how the decrease looks when you finish it. It's not like some great big giant gap because <clears throat> when you went over that third one, you, you made like a leaning um, double crochet almost when you went over and picked up that third stitch like that. So then you can decide here how many you want to make since we skipped the first three to make that one. We can count and see how many chain two spaces we have. So I have 19 chain two spaces left. So my first decrease, I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do every six, every six, I'm gonna do a decrease. So we just did, this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is my sixth one. So in these next two stitches is gonna be my decrease. And we're gonna do that all the way around. And then on the next row, it, we would do a regular row of bush stitch and then on the, the row after that we'll do a decrease row and we'll do that and so we narrow the head down so that it's nice and um rounded like that so it doesn't just sh change shape <clears throat> very sh uh, quickly okay so if you want to and be able to tell where you did your first decrease so you don't mess up your count. You can use a stitch marker for that. stitch marker that way I can always count back and say okay this is where I made my first decrease at so we know that's our first decrease so we're going to do six two Three, four, that's five, and that's six. So our next one is going to be the decrease. So we're just going to go through that chain two space and pull up a loop go through the next chain two space pull up a loop i'm going to kind of push those together and hold them yarn over and pull it through two yarn over and pull it through two and so you get that extended um loop right there so you can tell where your your decreases are at and so we know we just did six one two three four five six 
and did our decrease. Now we're going to go ahead and finish our bush stitch. Okay, and so now we know that that's where we did our last bush stitch um, decrease. And so you can move your stitch marker if you want to. Or you can just add another stitch marker. It's up to you if you do that. Um, that basically just tells you how many decreases you did in that row if you added a stitch marker for each of those decreases. So we, now we know we did two decreases in this row so far. So now we're going to do six. And this is four. Five. And six. Okay, so now we're going to do our decrease. Okay, that's our decrease. And then we're going we to, we don't have six, so we won't be doing another decrease. So we did three decreases in that round. So we're just going to finish off this row. Our bush stitch. And then we're going to do a regular row of bush stitch. And we're back at our chain two, slip stitch, change two, turn your work. And then we're just going to do a regular row going around. Okay. But you can see where you did, did your decreases. It's like, um, I got like an extended stitch right there. So you can tell where your decreases are, but it won't be noticeable. Oh, the rain just got here. Ashley's pouring down now. And it's windy. And since we did six for our, every six for our first row of decreases, the next row we're going to, every five, we're going to do our decrease. Okay. That's after we finish this row of just regular blue stitch. Yeah, respond to my
Okay, so we're back around. Chain two and turn our work. So this is gonna be another decrease row. So it's gonna be every five. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So this is gonna be our first. That's five. So the six one. One, two, three, four. That's five. So we're gonna do our decrease all our decreases right here. Two. Three. Four. Five. And that's the fifth one, but we don't have room for another decrease, so we're just going to continue in pattern. Chain two, and then we're going to do a row of bush stitch all the way around. But you can see how our sides are starting to um, dome over, so to speak, round out. You can see how those sides are starting to round that way, but it's not doing it in a um, uneven or um, awkward, um, staggered looking um, way. And that's that's all you do to working in your bush stitch in the round. And you just keep doing this till you decreased it enough or if you feel like the head is um, way too long then you could do more decreases you don't have to start with six you could start go ahead and start with uh, four every four or five um, bush stitch doing a decrease if you want to decrease faster because you made your work um, longer um, down in the beginning it, it's up to you it's your head you know it's, it's what the, what function is that head going to serve for you what style type of hat are you making? Are you making something you can just throw over your hair to keep dust and dirt out of it while you're cleaning or outside doing yard work? But also it will still um, be cute and functional and warm. Or is it fits for a gift for someone? You want to be more particular? I mean, it's, it's up to you how you want to do your hat. It doesn't have to follow a pattern exactly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's, it's what you want your hat to be. And, uh, and and the enjoyment you get out of making your hat, uh, that's what's important. Okay. 
and I do believe my cousin and her children like wearing hair pieces and stuff. So, <clears throat> so they probably have a need for a hat that they can fit their hair up under. That's right there. So you working on your new blanket today, Ash? Or something else? She's getting clingy, wanting her mama all the time. But then once she gets grandma, she's happy. <laughs> Don't just bother my spinning wheel, little stinky girl. Yeah, leave on. No, 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 no. I'm gonna pop your hand. No. Go get your puppy. Go get. Go get your puppy. Leave long. No. Stop. You just being evil today. Oh. You can't play with that spin wheel. It'll hurt your hand. It'll hurt your hand. Yes, it will. It'll hurt your hand. You can't play with that either. That's varnish. No. You can't play with that either. That's glue. <laughs> now, what's that? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Hey. Hey, what? Hmm? Little girl. Mm-hmm. Whatever Anya 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 means. I'm sure you know. Get from back there, girl.
No. What you got? Give it here. No. Yes, I know, mean child. I know. You're not getting your way. And so that's making you mad. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sweet girl, I know. <laughs> Grandma, pretty little girl. Look at her shenanigans. Yes, you are. Look at all your shenanigans. Yes, you are. La 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 la. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually fallen out. It's so long. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
right, so got a little bit of a stir step going over here, but so I don't see it that this way. So now um, we're at that point where we want to close this on up. So we want to do decreases every row. So we're going to be doing a decrease every two bush stitch. So every two bush stitch, we're going to do a decrease. And then on the next row, every other stitch, we're going to do a decrease to go ahead and get this top closed off. Because our brim is going to be about two to three inches of knitting. Shh, what's wrong? Huh? Trying to get up. What's it? You're taller now. Uh, whatever you just said, okay. As long as it, I won't agree into something serious. <laughs> So every two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. So we did our chain two, we turn our work. And now we're doing a bush stitch. So that's two. Uh oh. Fall down. Okay. You want to pick it up? And so now we're going to do our decrease. Decrease, decrease. Okay. It's hard to concentrate right now because I got little Miss Brownie Bud in here with me. All right, so we get our decrease done. And we're going to do two. And then we're going to do our decrease. Okay. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven between us and your start. So do two. stitch. That's one. This is two. And do our decrease. And so we do this one. Two. And we're not going to have enough for another decrease, so we're just going to continue to work in pattern. Step stitch, chain two, turn, and see. Now we're going to go back and we're going to do, um, we're going to do one bush stitch and decrease one bush stitch and decrease okay make sure we're going in the right direction this is this way all right one bush stitch and decrease <clears throat> One bush stitch. Oh, there's your mama. Ma. Ma. Yes. Hey, cranky pants. See you. Bye bye. All three of the cats are laughing. Bye. All three of them want to be. Oh, she's waving. Bye bye. Bye bye. She all happy now. She got her mama. Grandma's just chicken liver now. One decrease one, so this is one decrease. Okay. 
Okay. One. And decrease. Do a decrease. And then we're back at our beginning. And we're going to slip stitch, chain two. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to do decrease um, every, pretty much every stitch. We're going to decrease um, so we're going to do our decrease every stitch pretty much. And so you can decrease in pattern till you get to the top of the hat. And then you can just use your darning needle. To cinch the top of the hat together. And these are the last two. And so we're going to cut all, um, we're going to do our yeah. So we're going to turn back the other way. Do a slip stitch here. Okay, and we're going to turn our work. And then we're basically going to just pick up each of these, chain two spaces. Going around the head top, and I got one more. And we're going to take and we're going to draw a loop and pull through all of these stitches as best you can. You might have to work at it a little bit. There we go. So we drew a loop and we pulled it through all of those. So now we're going to cut our yarn. Probably about like a five, six inch tail and pull it through there. And you need to get out your darning needle. I need to find my, I don't know where I stuck it at. My gold one. So as you can see, this is what oh, there it is. The other one. This is what our hat looks like so far. Okay, we're just gonna cinch this top up good, and then we're gonna pick up the stitches for our border. That's if you're gonna knit your border on. If you weren't gonna knit your border on, you can do a, a crochet uh, border and then sew it on. I um, mean, that's up to you 
how you want to do your border but I'm going to knit my border on and I'm um, at the beginning of the video I showed you guys how um, how I use that technique and see it cinched, cinched it shut so now we're just going to weave in this end some to secure that make sure those little curious hands can't just pull it apart and make sure you go through some of your plies on your yarn that would add extra hiding ability and extra strength to your um, seam in the top of this head together to make sure that um, it's closed up nice and tight. If you want to put a pom pom on it, you can also sew a pom pom on if you wanted to. This, like I said, all this is your preferences for your hat. It's your hat. You you do it how you want it to be done. Okay, Okay, so I've basically finished the hat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needles up. I don't want to lose them. They're not really lost. They're just misplaced. But my bent tip needle is somewhere. I don't know where I put it, but it's somewhere nearby. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the stitches for the brim and our original count was 70 stitches this is our starting point and I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to use my circular needles <clears throat> make sure they're nice and tight I think I'll use the chagoos so these are I think they're 10 Chagu. Yeah, six milliliter. The hook was a 5.5. So this is going to be just a little bit larger stitch than with the hook, but since it's knitting, it uses less yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember how I showed you guys at the beginning. This is why we wanted to pick up those bumps because that way it leaves a nice, leaves a nice flat edge. So what I'm going to do is this is where my hook is at. So I'm going to put it right here. Hey, Julie, how are you? So we're going to pick these up. There's 70. I like DPNs as well. So we got our yarn, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot in our yarn. It doesn't have to be as long as previous tail, weaving in the ends. And I'm just going to use my crochet hook, and I'm going to go over here to this one right here and I'm going to pull it through like so okay so that's going to get us started all right okay so that's going to get us started so now we're just going to go around the head and we're going to go up under these V's we're going to go up under those V's. We're going to yarn over a needle, needle tip and bring it through and, up, and put a loop on our um, needle. Okay? 
I'm gonna do this all the way around under each V. I'm just gonna do it all the way around. And see how that makes it so much easier to pick up those stitches when you come in when you when you're um picking up this in stitches for your brim. I'm just gonna do that all the way around. I'm just gonna do a knit one pearl, one brim on this hat. Uh, this this is a really easy hat to make, uh, Julie. Very easy hat to make. And by doing a knit one pearl one brim or any type of knitted brim, really, it's reversible. So, so this whole hat will be reversible. You can it won't matter how you put it on. Nobody will be able to tell which side is which side. Unless you put like a flower or something on the hat, or or you sew on a pom-pom or something, then you know you're gonna have a a, a right side and ins you know, have the outside and the inside of the hat, but Doing it this way is reversible, um, totally reversible. Yeah, um, um, I well, I enjoy looking at doilies and the time that goes into them. I have large hands and I can't stand using crochet thread, can't stand it. And now that my eyes are over. 40 years old, I don't really, really don't want to be trying to use needles that small, just the little crochet steel hooks, if I don't have to. All right. So we're not going to pick this up because that was actually part of a stitch. So we're going to put our needle over here I'll um, stitch mark over here to mark the beginning of the row and we're just going to knit one pearl one until our brim is between two and a half to three inches long so this would make a nice slouchy hat um, when it's done so we're just going to just go through and knit one knit one pearl one and just going to keep doing that 
until we're done with this hat. And I might switch to DPNs because this is um, a little tight going. Oh, I want to get like around on the side. I'm going to go ahead and switch over. So what we got. That's 18. Already.
you take a lot of pictures of the dress All right, so they're on the DPNs now, so it'll be more comfortable for me going alone. So that's basically it. That's how you you crochet a uh, hat using a bush stitch, and that's how you pick up the stitches so that you can knit your one by one rib um, rib brim. And I'll take a picture of this to show you guys when I finish the brim uh, later on the day. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's a very easy hat to do. It's an attractive hat. And um, it's fun. So y'all take care. That's it for me for, for now. I might be back later, but I don't know.